The Harris County Attorney's Office and Human Resources and Risk Management are pleased to provide this ethics video with important information that applies to all employees of Harris County, Texas. We hope the information that follows demonstrates the county's commitment to providing its services while maintaining the highest standards of ethical behavior. Hello, I'm Graylin Wells from the Harris County Attorney's Office. We're here to talk about ethics and how it applies to our jobs as employees of Harris County. Let's start with where to find the relevant policies. We have two policies that describe the county's commitment to ethical service. The first is the Harris County Statement of Ethics adopted by Commissioner's Court. The other, similar but less detailed policy, is found in Section 2 of the Harris County Personnel Policies and Procedures. You can access both documents by running a Google search for Harris County Ethics Policy. These policies are premised on four commitments to ethical behavior, honesty and integrity, respect, fairness and impartiality, and confidentiality. These commitments are the foundational pieces of the public services we provide every day. When we honor and adhere to these four commitments, our public service builds public trust. No policy or training video can capture every situation you may face as a county employee. If you're ever in doubt about a course of action, talk to your supervisor or department head about it. For now, let's look closely at each of the four commitments in the context of county business so you will understand them and be able to judge your own actions. Let's start with honesty and integrity. Honesty and integrity are fairly simple words. Sometimes we limit their meaning to nothing more than don't lie, or don't cheat, but they actually encompass so much more about our work life. Here are some of the most important ones. Give an honest day's work to the taxpayers. We're taxpayers too. Don't you want your hard-earned money to be spent on productive employees? This means our timesheets need to be accurate. They also need to be transparent. If your timesheet shows you started work at 8 and left at 5 with a 60-minute lunch, but you left the office at 4 p.m., the information might be accurate but it isn't transparent. Because your timesheet looks like you were at work when you really might not have been at work. And if you were here at 4.30, your health might be better, but your timesheet isn't accurately reflecting reality. It isn't transparent. Similarly, it would be a serious ethics breach to record a 60 minute lunch when you were actually out of the office from 11.25 a.m. to 1.05 p.m. Let's take a look at another situation that you might not have thought of before in terms of our ethical obligations. Hey. Hey, mm. what's up? Good, not much. Just here thinking about calling in sick tomorrow. Calling in sick tomorrow? How do you know you're going to be sick tomorrow? What, are you psychic? <coughs> yeah. I think I'm getting a cold. I feel it. <clears throat> okay, I'm not sick. I'm not sick, but I am sick and tired of this place. I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of my boss and the deadlines. And I need a break or I feel like if I don't take a day off, I'm gonna scream. I mean, I get it. Things have been crazy here, but I don't think you can use sick time for that. Why not? It's my time and I earned it. I, I should be able to take a break and, you know, a duvet day, if you know what I mean. What's a duvet day? <sighs> It's a day where you can just stay home, relax, binge on some Netflix, you know, no traffic, no deadlines, no bosses, no whining coworkers. Just, just home and relax. Yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, who doesn't want to take a day like that, but I don't think that's what sick time is for. You should look to use vacation time or your comp time. And really, if you use sick time for that, that's unethical. <sighs> I guess you're right. You know, I didn't think about it that way. To be clear, the employee in the video was not really sick. Certainly, if you have a legitimate mental or emotional illness, sick leave would cover any absences related to it. We all use county equipment and supplies every day. We should only use it for county business. The Harris County Personnel Policies and Procedures authorize department heads to allow employees to use county equipment or supplies for de minimis personal use. De minimis just means a little. If you need to make a few copies of a flyer for the PTA board at your daughter's school, that's de minimis. Making copies for every parent in the whole school or making a few copies for every weekly PTA meeting is not. 
even if your department allows employees to use county equipment for de minimis personal use, there are still two things you must never do. You may never use county resources to make a personal profit, and you may never use county resources for political gain. If someone suggests to you that either of those is okay, or worse, pressures you to do campaign work on county time, report it immediately. At the end of this video, you'll get the contact information for where to make a report. Remember, we have no expectation of privacy in the electronic equipment we use to do our jobs. Our commitment to honesty and integrity also means that county employees will complete all documents accurately, including the date. Nothing good ever comes from backdating a document. Do not sign someone else's name unless you have express permission and a legitimate reason for doing it. Many of us use county property and equipment outside of our regular offices or work locations. When we do, we must be sure to protect the property. For instance, don't leave a county laptop or iPad in the front seat of your car, not even for a few minutes. Instead, take it with you or lock it in the trunk. The same is true for tools and other equipment. Harris County employees aren't perfect. We're human. That means we make mistakes, and that's okay. If you make a mistake, admit it. Covering up mistakes is wrong. Fixing mistakes, if possible, after acknowledging them is the right thing to do. If someone asks you to cover up a mistake or you know that someone's doing that, we're counting on you to report it. The second piece of the puzzle is respect. We are committed to being respectful to every man, woman, and child we come in contact with because that's our job. Whether interacting with a member of the public, a coworker, or someone from another county department, always treat people with respect. We are polite and professional at all times. So far, we've talked about our commitments to honesty and integrity and respect. Now let's look at fairness and impartiality. Harris County is committed to providing fair access to all the services we provide, as well as exercising discretion without even the appearance that we favor any person or group over another one. Sometimes employees aren't sure whether they exercise discretion with regards to others. If your department provides a service on a first come, first serve basis, and you let one person go ahead of everyone else, you have exercised discretion. Even if the person who skipped the line did nothing to get that privilege, the others in the line won't know that. It creates the appearance that the person who skipped the line did do something to go out of turn. Are you an inspector? If you inspect things for compliance with the county regulation, whether the thing passes inspection is subject to your discretion. If you work with any county vendors and have even the slightest input on whether that vendor continues to work with the county in the future, you also have discretion. I want to make it very clear that Harris County's ethics policies do not use the Texas Penal Code as the sole standard for judging our behavior. Commissioner's Court is committed to making sure we do not engage in any act that creates even an appearance of impropriety. Let me put it this way. Ethical behavior can lead to your continued employment as a Happy County employee. Unethical behavior can lead to disciplinary action, including immediate termination. Criminal behavior can lead not only to termination, but also to arrest, prosecution, and conviction. Here are some things that decrease the appearance of fairness. Sometimes a vendor, contractor, or anyone who is subject to inspection or regulation by the county offers an employee rodeo tickets, buys lunch, or may even offer an employee a part-time job on the side. Do you see how those acts and others like them could make the county look bad? It can create the appearance that we have already treated the person more favorably than others, or that we will treat them better in the future. So we need to be careful before we do any of those things. If you are ever in doubt, ask your department head. Even though the penal code is not the sole standard we use to judge our behavior under the ethics policy, it's important for us to know what the penal code actually prohibits. Let's start with what should be obvious. We cannot ask for or accept any benefit in exchange for our discretion as a public servant. That is true whether the benefit is offered before or after the exercise of discretion. Here's another thing. Attempts to influence your discretion aren't always directly targeted to you.
Sarah, I can't believe this, but that one and only walk-in cooler that you have is still not functioning properly. I know, I ordered the part, it's just not here yet. It should be in tomorrow though. Well, that's fine and dandy, but I cannot pass you on your inspection today. I cannot pass this cooler that's not functioning properly. What? Are you kidding me? This is the third time that you've been here. I have to open this restaurant. I'm losing thousands of dollars on a daily basis. I can appreciate that, but you know what? The public safety is more important. There's no way you're gonna to pass today. Okay, you know what? I lost my cool. I know you have a very hard job, but this is the fourth restaurant I'm opening, and you know I keep a clean kitchen. Can't you just come back tomorrow and check it? Oh, tomorrow? I think I'm booked tomorrow. In fact, I'm booked the rest of the week. We're looking at... I can be back on the 20th to do your follow-up inspection. The 20th? That's two weeks away. I'm sorry, but we're really busy and that's just gonna be the way it has to be because we, we can't pass you today. I'll see you on the 20th, okay? Make sure that that cooler is fixed. Wait, wait, wait. How's your dad doing? I remember you were telling me he was battling cancer. Oh, you remember. Yes, he's battling cancer. He's on the fifth round of chemotherapy. Um, he's doing better. I appreciate, I appreciate you asking. Anyways, I'll see you on the 20th. Okay. Friday, 5.58 p.m. Hey, Laura, it's Syrah from Syrah Steakhouse. Um, I have a card for your dad. If you have a minute, um, you can stop by and come pick it up. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Bye. Hi, Syrah. Um, I got the voice message that uh, you have something for my dad. Yeah, hey, Laura. It's good to see you again. Here's a card for your dad. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll make sure I get this to him. Yeah, of course. Wonderful. Hey, since you're here, would you mind taking a look at the cooler? I got the part. It's installed. It's ready to go. It should only take you a few minutes. Well, I guess I can squeeze it in, seeing as I'm here. Great, it looks like you did pass, wonderful. Anyways, I'll be on my way and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. And thanks again for the card. Thank you. Even though the restaurant owner insisted that the gift card was for the inspector's father, the appearance is that the gift card was meant for the inspector. Further, even if the refrigerator legitimately would have passed inspection, the inspector's credibility is shot. Is your job really worth it? Let's see what the inspector should have done. Hi, Sarah. I got a voicemail saying that you had a greeting card for my dad. Yeah, hey, Laura. It's good to see you again. Um, here's a card for your dad. Oh, well, yes, I'll make sure that I get this to him. Wow. Oh, I thought this was going to be a greeting card. This is actually a gift card. I can't accept this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a gift card for your dad. It should nope. be fine. Nope, I can't accept it. I'm really sorry. I know your intentions were good, but no, we cannot accept that. Um, but I'll see you on the 20th, okay? I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Okay. Here, the restaurant owner was simply trying to get her refrigerator inspected earlier than the 20th. Again, even if the refrigerator legitimately passed inspection, the improper benefit was that the inspection was completed weeks earlier than it would have been otherwise. So, if you have discretion scheduling inspections, accepting even a cheap lunch from the vendor can create an appearance of impropriety. We are not allowed to ask for or accept money, loans, or negotiable instruments from anyone over whom we exercise discretion under any circumstances. The most common negotiable instruments are checks and promissory notes. And in 2017, the Texas Ethics Commission determined that gift cards are the same as cash. Therefore, do not accept even a small gift card, say a $5 Starbucks card, from someone over whom you exercise discretion. You might be thinking, man, I would never accept a bribe. I know better than that. And I'm sure you do. But let's look at a situation where an unsuspecting county employee might inadvertently violate the rules. Oh my gosh, this, this card that Syrah gave me, it's not a greeting card after all. It's, it's a gift card. I better call my boss. The inspector did the right thing. Make sure you do too if anything like that happens to you. Let's summarize what we've learned so far. Don't accept anything in exchange for the exercise of your discretion. 
don't ever accept cash, loans, or checks from anyone subject to your discretion under any circumstances, ever. Generally, we must not ask for or accept other gifts, favors, or anything else of any value from someone over whom we exercise discretion, even if it is intended as a show of appreciation. Our constituents often want to show appreciation for the work we do. If that happens, remember that you can never accept cash, including gift cards, checks, or loans, even as a thank you gift. Thank you, Lily, for such a wonderful day and keeping me safe on these roads. You know, Joyce, I really appreciate it. But it is unethical as a government employee to take any tips. But the best tip you can give me is a compliment, and I'm really glad you had a great time today. Hope to see you again next time. Okay, so let's look at some exceptions to the general rule that we aren't allowed to accept gifts, favors, or anything else of value from the people subject to our discretion. Then we'll take an even closer look at how an employee might get in trouble abusing those exceptions. Here's the first exception. It's okay to accept promotional or commemorative items of minimal value, like mouse pads, ball caps, and key rings. We can also accept unsolicited and perishable food items in small quantities delivered infrequently. So, if a vendor or frequent customer brings a box of donuts to a meeting at the county, it's okay to eat a donut. It is not okay to call one of your customers or vendors and ask them to provide lunch for an employee awards luncheon. We are allowed to accept discounts offered to all employees, like Harris County Night and an Astros game. Similarly, in the past, Verizon, AT&T, and Dell have all offered discounts to county employees. Those companies do the same for other companies. Feel free to take advantage of those discounts. As for other gifts, the Texas Penal Code has an exception for gifts with a value less than $50. Remember, that doesn't include cash, loans, checks, or gift cards. We can't accept any of those ever from anyone over whom we exercise discretion. You could accept a calendar or clock or other similar items valued at up to $49.99. The County Statement of Ethics adds an additional limitation. County employees must not accept gifts valued at over $100 annually. Here's another exception, travel and entertainment provided by vendors or others. Employees are allowed to go to the games, the rodeo, or other similar events with vendors or potential vendors as long as the vendor is actually present. You should still check with your department head before accepting an invitation like that. Now that we've gone over the exceptions to the general rules, let's take a minute to consider how abusing the exceptions can still create an appearance of impropriety. First, accepting food, gifts, or travel frequently can easily violate the policy. Accepting a single gift or travel and entertainment that is extravagant can create an appearance of impropriety. Lunch at Subway or even Texas Roadhouse is one thing, but dinner at a posh, upscale restaurant is another. A weekend at someone's beach house in Galveston might not be extravagant, but a week-long trip to Cozumel to go deep sea fishing probably is. When accepting anything from someone subject to your discretion or authority, consider the timing. If the person has been a county vendor for 10 years, accepting a turkey around Thanksgiving time doesn't look bad. On the other hand, if the person owns a company who is bidding on a contract right now, accepting even a small fruit basket the day before the bids are opened is out of line. It just looks bad, doesn't it? To summarize, be extremely careful when accepting anything from anyone who is subject to your discretion or authority. Think before you act. Would this person be doing this for me if I wasn't working for the county? If the answer is no, don't do it. And report it to your supervisor or department head. Here's what you do if someone offers you something you can't accept. Graciously decline it. Explain that Harris County is committed to providing fair access to everyone and that accepting the item would create an appearance of impropriety. If the person persists, contact your department head or report it to human resources and risk management. If you receive an unsolicited item that you can't or do not want to keep, either return it to the sender or donate it to a charity formed for educational, religious, or scientific purposes. 
you will find a list of some qualifying local charities on the Human Resources and Risk Management website. Even though the penal code has a few exceptions to the general rule, your department may have a zero tolerance policy. If it does, you should follow your department policy. The remaining piece of our ethical commitments is confidentiality. Harris County holds a tremendous amount of information. Regarding the residents of Harris County, we know the location and value of your home and who owns it with you. We know whether you're current on paying your property taxes. We know whether you are registered to vote and which elections you voted in. We hold marriage licenses and divorce decrees, including how much someone pays in child support and for which children. And that's not all. Regarding us, the employees of Harris County, we know your home address, phone number, and emergency contact person, who your life insurance beneficiary is, how many people you're covering on the health plan, who they are, and how they're related to you. We know how much money you make, how old you are, and what your social security number is. That's not even close to all the information Harris County holds on residents and employees, but I think you get the point. Even though some of this information is subject to disclosure under the Texas Public Information Act, unless we have a proper request under that law, we must keep this information confidential and release it only on a strict need to know basis. Remember earlier when I mentioned protecting county equipment and we talked about the laptop or iPad? Well, in addition to protecting the device, we have to protect the data on the device. Whether you're carrying around confidential information on a thumb drive or have a briefcase full of paper, remember to protect the confidentiality of the information. Honesty and integrity, respect, fairness and impartiality, and confidentiality. This is how we provide our services to the public. This is who we are. This is what we do. We are the employees of Harris County, Texas, and I am proud to be one. Thank you for taking the time to look over this video. We really appreciate it, and we really hope that you take everything to heart that you learned here today. Thank you for the time. If you have any questions about the ethics policy, or if you want to report any concerns, please contact Erica Owens and Human Resources and Risk Management.